All right. So uh, welcome back. We are. This is our second uh, day streaming. Um, I'm Dan. And I'm Dwayne. We're two developers. There's two software developers. Um, our first stream, we started a new project where uh, the goal is to make a um, shared calendar app um, using Angular um, and Node and Express. And so we're going to continue on with that today. And um, I guess uh, the goal is to show um, not necessarily how we do development professionally, but just kind of um, just you know, watch along as we do a Angular app from scratch. And then, um, you know, we'll show a little bit of, um, you know, some some project organization, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I think I think we kind of glossed over that last time. We just kind of said, we're going to build a calendar app and just dove right into it. I think we should kind of take a step back uh, before we start coding tonight and just kind of outline some ideas on in like some stories or, or features that we want to uh, make part of this project. Yep. So um, there's a tool that we've used in the past um, to organize projects and it's called Trello. Um, so basically what this is, is it's, um, it's a tool for um, storyboarding. So you can create tasks and organize them and mark your progress. Um, as things go. So let's just make a new one here. Um, let's call it calendar app. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> so you can make any number of columns. You can add any number of cards. Each card is going to be like a task or um, also known as like a story or epic. Um, so we can just start adding tasks and then eventually we'll just start chipping away at them. Um, so as it stands right now, we have a client application and a server application, I guess. So the server has basically nothing in it. Um, right. And for client, we've started a um, like a calendar component, but it's not really done, and it's like kind of not really doing anything. Well, I mean, it renders this month, right? right? So. Okay, so um, one of the first things we probably want to get going is um, just a basic web app server. Um, and after we have a basic it's, server that can like, so what would, what would that do? Would it just like open up a, a port yeah, and listen to it? Like and that's simple, it. Like display hello world when you go to the, the URL. Okay. So, uh, like which URL, like just like a, a get request to the root. Yeah. Just a, exactly. A get request to the root. Okay. All right. Um, after that, um, maybe we want to, um, create like a really basic user, um, that just like has a name and then like when you go to the app, you can, uh, just input a name in a text field and we can save it down. So this will be like, sort of like an authentication or yeah, the beginnings but not really. of authentication. It's not actually authentication. Okay. You just like type in a name and it saves it to the database. Basically. Yeah, of course. But it's a it's a step towards Super that. Super basic. Yeah. <laughs> authentication. All right. Um, after that, maybe we want to start um, organizing our app a little better um, for how we want it to be long term, so we can organize our packages um, so that like you know all the um, the data models are together in like some sort of schemas directory and then like um you know we I, have like I think controller. that would I think that should kind of happen naturally as we project out. You think so? Yeah. Well, all right. Uh I would maybe we could throw so let's see. So for the server piece uh like if we just have like authentication mm -hmm. uh to sort of like log the user in uh, then what would we ultimately store on the user? It would just be events, right? right. So do we want to throw in like, uh, I mean, this obviously wouldn't be for this stream, but it would be like over time we chip away at this, right? So we have like an events, uh, yeah, an event schema. And then, okay. Um, we're going to want to hook up the client to the server, like build-wise. So we need to have some sort of, uh, way to build the client and then like deploy it on the server. 
Okay. Um, right, because the the client and server, as it stands, are two completely separate projects. Right. But they they need to be able to talk to each other. Yep. And, but couldn't we just have like the server running? Like we have two terminal windows open. Server runs on like port eighty one eighty one. Client runs on whatever port it runs on now. So yep. we could. So the the client will make um, like API requests to the server, mm -hmm. um, and that's basically it. Uh, eventually, we're gonna want to. Well, I mean, I guess we could keep the the projects completely separate always. I suppose that's what we do at work. Yeah. Um, okay, then we don't have to Although, worry about. Yeah, the only difference is this is still one repo. At True. work, they're two separate repos. Yeah, we don't need two repos. But... Yeah, I think one is perfectly fine for, for our needs here. Okay. Um, um, but, uh, like, eventually, though, we will want to, like, maybe build, like, an ISO or, or bundle this up and, and make it uh, so someone can just unzip it into a folder and, and have it go. Right. Or, uh, we can, but, or okay. we do Docker, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. If we want to get super gold platey. Let's see. I, I would like to do that eventually. <laughs> Falls into my whole home automation, uh, like epic project in my head. But okay. Um, All right. So we've got super basic authentication. We've got a user with um, events on him. Yep. Um, so now we probably want to um, show like a generic calendar for the user with their events in the calendar. Yep. So. Okay. And it would maybe like the show calendar would really just kind of be for this month. Cause uh, I think having the, the month navigation, mm -hmm. uh, I think it makes sense to be a separate card. Okay. Let's do that one next. Okay. Um... So I'm thinking like these cards, they should be like little tasks that we could maybe try to accomplish during a stream. During one stream. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Because I think that way we kind of chunk it down into more manageable pieces. Right. Another thing we could do um, to show a little bit more of the functionality of Trello is we can make more columns and then we could group um, different cards together under like an epic. So, excuse me. Uh... You know, I don't think I've ever seen that done before. Oh, really? Um, yeah. We used to do that on, uh, on the previous team. So oh. if we wanted to do... Um, I don't know. Um, or I, we could call it just calendar functionality, I guess. We can make a ca calendar functionality group and then <coughs> do this sort of thing. And then, um, you know, maybe that would be useful. I don't know. So that's an option. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, what else do we want to throw up here that's just uh, still pretty basic? So, I think, uh, I don't know if we want to throw this on there now, but, I mean, we will have to have some sort of, like, real authentication. Okay. So, like, uh, we're probably not going to roll it ourselves, but we could, like, use something like Auth0 or uh, Firebase. Mm -hmm. I haven't used Firebase um, in a while. That's kind of fun. And that, yeah, would, I, that would give us some other functionality that we might have to roll ourselves as well. Like, um, yeah, instead of using like, um, what's it called? Like, what is that WebSocket library? Uh, Socket.io. Uh, okay. Instead of using Socket.io to send events to other people uh, or notifications to other people, we could use Firebase. So that's oh. an option. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. So we have month navigation. Uh, eventually, we would also have to have like an add, edit, delete uh, event okay. within uh, client. Well, okay. So I guess I would kind of think that would be part of this. Maybe we should break I this think, up. Yeah, I, I see that more as like the servers. I don't. Do we want to use like tags or labels or whatever they're called? Like we could have client server. Oh, we could do that. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Or we could we could also prefix each of these with client or server. Uh, okay, so let's make a server is green, client right. is blue. All right. Okay. 
Um, how do I turn this off like that? Okay. Okay. So you're saying this yes. is um, client? Yeah. I mean, it kind of has, there needs to be client and server. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Because if you build one without the other, then it's really working. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's the kind of test, though, that you'd want to keep together, probably. Because, like, you can... You could build the endpoints to AED events on the server, but then if you're not exercising them, then you can't yeah. release anything. Yeah. Okay. Fair so enough. Like this client and server. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, this one is also kind of both. Yep. Boy, these labels sure are useful. <laughs> right. So this is going to be mostly client, but also kind of server. Yeah, probably. Okay, for sure, month navigation, full on client feature there. Is it? Is it though? Because like you might be saying, you might uh, like when you fetch the events, you might have to pass in the month. I would imagine it. you could just fetch all the events for user. Oh, I think your audio died. Hello. Okay, there we go. No, okay. Yep. I would imagine you could just fetch all the events for user and then just. I think play. that, yeah, like I guess in the beginning that would be, fun, but uh, like my calendar, it probably has like thousands of events in it Holy by cow. now. Busy guy yeah. over there. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay. All yeah. right. That's a good point. That might be some sort of like performance improvement that we make eventually. Okay. Um, yeah, that works. So I'm gonna call this client two. All right. This is. So far, these client and server labels aren't aren't great. Yeah, because everything's no, both, right. but whatever. Yep. So Here we go. sorry, Basic I server, suggested server. that. <laughs> That's totally server. See, it can right. be useful. Um. So, uh, should we get started? Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I have a cat in my room. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So uh, in the past with other um, Angular projects, I've used um, a generator to like kind of kickstart the, the application. Um, I think that's totally fine to do, um, but it's kind of a pain because um, if things aren't laid out how you like, then you have to run the generator and then just like rename all your files and like move stuff around until you like it. Um, so we kind of wanted to try doing it all completely from scratch here, which I don't know if that's that's probably not the typical way that people start these, uh, but we'll see, I guess. That's how I start it usually. Okay. All right. Um, so we want a basic express server. Um, yep. So let's just make a new. Okay. So actually, we have TypeScript, we have Express, and TS Node. Um, yep. So we can make a new TypeScript file. And we need to import. Experience. Did we did we want to create like a source for? Oh, or do we? Yeah, we probably do. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. So yeah, so I like to keep my my source code under a single folder. Okay, fair enough. Um. All right. So we need Express. Uh, that's not really. Do you want to use import? Oh. Okay. All right. So I think you have to do import star as express. Oh, we need to install the typings for express and node. Oh, do we? OK. Yeah, so you can do, because uh, uh, that way uh, Visual Studio Code will actually give us code insight, which makes things a little easier for us. Okay. Uh, so under server, you're going to do npm install uh, dash dash save dev, uh, then at types slash express and then add types node. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's a shorthand for save dev, but I never remember it. I think that is the uh, so well no, like isn't it like dash capital D or something like that? Oh I don't know. Yeah. I always do save dev. Okay. Uh so yeah this is import star as express. The only reason why I know this is because I just did this like the other day. Okay. So it's not like I have this memorized. <laughs> All right. So we have Express. Um... All 
Where do we want to go? 4,200? No. Uh, no, <laughs> can't uh, do that. That's angular. We always 80, use 80? like 3344. All right, 80 is fine. Why? Is uh, 3344 like a, a number that you got somewhere else, or is that just I think something that you guys came up with? Just the default. I don't know if that's just like the default for all the generators I've used in the past or what, oh. but okay. we've always had 3344 as like the default. Pro okay. Server. Um, okay. So we said we want a basic hello world, right? So this is going to be yep. as basic as you can get. All right. All right. Do we need a. Uh... I forget, like, do we need, like, an HTTP? Like, do we need to import HTTP um, and create a server off of that? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I guess it depends. Right. Um, I don't know. Well, let's let's go with this. We'll see how this works. So I think, did it actually, uh, uh, did that work? I think I have like a for some reason. Response. Yeah, I think it needs to be express dot response, right? Okay. And express dot request, I think. Okay. Yeah. I could be wrong. Oh my gosh! So I I use a <sighs> Mac with a Windows keyboard for work, and I just switched to that, and it's like super messing with me right now. That's all my keyboard shortcuts are different. Yeah. Uh, okay. You should get a, a Mac at home. Um, I have one. Wait. So, wait. I thought you have the Mac at work. I do. I just got a Mac at work. I Right now, I'm okay. on my Windows PC. I have a Mac, but it can't stream, probably. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I thought we wanted to say hello, world. You failed the requirements. <laughs> All right, I'm hitting the Windows key like all the time now because that's what the the Mac key usually is. No, the right, command so key. To, yeah. Now I have to tell the server to listen. Yep. And I guess that takes a callback for what to do when it's done listening. So that's weird. The the code insight showed that there was like a a host name. Oh really? But maybe that was just one of the the possible. Uh, listen commands. Host name. Oh, yeah. Name. So this is one of six. So oh, okay. it's probably. Okay. Yeah. So you're probably right. Actually, let's do this. All right. Okay. So let's see right. what this does. So do you know how to start it? I think so. Okay. Oh, I have nope. to build it. Uh, you just need to run TS node. So if you open up package JSON, we need, mm -hmm. let's create that start script. Okay. Or whatever we want to call it. You want to call it serve or start? Just call it start. All right. So on line seven, you want to just rip that out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's make a new one. Okay. Uh, so it's just TS node. Uh, the command will be TS node, then source slash server TS. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to use forward slash, I think. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. <clears throat> uh, TS dash node. Sorry. Oh. I I totally should have caught that. Where was your pair? Awful. Yeah. Oh, you know, I wonder if we should be watching. Uh, like if there's anyone on and they're trying to chat with us. Then, I had it uh, open, um, but my screen sh I mean, you could open it right now, I suppose. I doubt there's anyone. Yeah, me too, We're but hey, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I feel so stupid. Like, I don't know how to open it. Oh, I'm in the wrong browser, first of all. All right. So there's no one here. Now All right. So talking to each other. Yep. All right. 
Okay, so our server is running on 8080. Yo, I'm listening on 8080. Okay. So, if I go... Boom. Hello, world. We did it. Awesome. All right. Sweet. So let me open up our Trello. That was easy. Hello. I uh, just switched to Firefox at home just because I don't like Chrome stealing on my data. And uh, some things just aren't as nice. Uh -huh. Like the tab management just like isn't as good. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I haven't really noticed. Like I use both Firefox and Chrome. But I, I use Chrome more than Firefox, so. So, like, if you have two windows open and you want to move one tab from one window to another, it's oh, just, like, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, I don't really do that. Okay. All right, so that is done, cool. right? Yep. Did uh, you throw it over and done? No, I didn't. Yeah. Whoop. All right, what's uh, next? Another thing we want to do, actually, we don't have a card yet, is um, have some sort of infrastructure for handling our APIs. And then also, oh. um, do we want our server to serve up the Angular app, or? Um, I think that would. Hmm. So I guess there's there's uh, different ways to look at this. Like if we have them separate servers, like if they're completely separate, it keeps the the ISO smaller maybe. And if if you want to like Dockerize this and like uh, you could dedicate resources to just the server piece mm -hmm. and minimal resources to the client piece. But I think for our purposes, I think it's fine to just bundle it all in one. Okay. Yeah. So that way it's just a single, uh, a single server and that's it. Okay. So we have to have some sort of um, build step that takes the compiled um, JavaScript and like copies it over to the server deploy. Yep, and I like maybe we could have a build uh, script in server that would build client, okay, and then copy it. Okay, so like when you build from server, it builds everything. Yeah, and it's like good to go. Okay. Yeah, because that way it's just like a single command. Right. So then we're gonna need um, we're gonna need a route for all of our APIs, and then we're yep. gonna need a route to serve up the actual Angular app itself. So. Uh, did we want to use TSOA or TSO or whatever? Not really. No, <laughs> too, that, that's fine. It, it is a little complicated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's, and I don't, I don't think we need to have like swagger or anything, which I think is the point uh, of TSOA. So. No, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. true. Forget it. All right. Forgotten. Okay. All right. Cool. So we knocked out a card already. Um, so next, what's another simple thing we can tackle? Actual authentication. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, how about super basic basic authentication? Okay. So that would we'll need a well, let's see. So that would So we're are gonna, gonna have want... to have like a users table. Yeah. Like we're gonna Okay, so we need to connect to like Mongo or something. Right. So first we need Mongoose. Um Mongoose? Yeah, that's the driver. Oh, for right. Okay. Well, do you have Mongo installed? I do. Oh. I was prepared. Nice. What if we decide to go with MySQL? Um, we're not. Boom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, oh. Uh, uh. After a while, these headsets hurt my ears. Oh, really? Yeah. Sucks. What do you have? Yeah. Looks... What do you mean? What do I? Have? What oh, have the H eight hundred. What's it by? Who makes it? Logitech. They a, are nice. You need a good gaming but... headset. Yeah, I should. I need the ones that kind of go over your ears. Oh, how about I can spell? Yeah, like mine. Actually, mine go over my ears. Actually, you know what? I think I might have a different set. But... I don't know where they are though. All right. So now with Mongoose, do we do we also have to install MongoDB, or does that? No, that comes no. with Mongoose. Well, I guess this this package JSON is assuming you already have MongoDB. Does wait? Does MongoDB come with Mongoose? I don't think so. Uh, Mongoose does come with Mon MongoDB. Are you sure? Like if you run, uh, yeah, what's that command? 
uh, that shows you all the packages that are uh, installed. Like, list, I think. Oh, well, that's a easy one. Uh, yeah, so look under. Yeah, oh, it's okay. right there. So I already have MongoDB installed, though. Okay. Well, no, MongoDB is just the the connector to Mongo. So I thought the, Mongoose the, was the connector. No, Mongoose is like a wrapper around Mongo, so you can uh, use uh, uh, like objects and stuff like that. I see. Okay. Okay. Because otherwise, you're interacting directly with the Mongo API, so you have to do the get collection and everything else. Okay. Mongoose just makes it nice, so you can use models and schemas. Okay. All right. So theoretically, I have Mongoose installed. So I'm going to make a new folder. Um, so at work, we've got like an APIs directory under which we have like all of our various models. Um, do we want to do something similar? Sure. Or just throw like a models directory in there? Uh, well, Let's just start with models. Okay, that's fine. So why have a subfolder for user? Um, because I figured we'd have like the schema itself would be a file, and then like a file for the model. Okay. And so then... the okay. The model is. I'm trying to remember. So the schema defines the the collection, and then the right. model is what interacts with it. Right. Well. Uh. Yeah. I I know that. I'm just trying to think of, uh, like what's what goes in the model again? Is that the factory that we have? Yeah, that's yeah. We turned it into a factory in our thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Th this is fine. Okay. Are we gonna write specs too? I don't know. Uh, I feel like we should, but yeah. No, I mean, at work we always write specs, right? right? And for side projects, usually I don't. Just because I want to keep going and right. specs kind of get in the way. So, sure. but we got to say, like, if what's the point of the stream? Is it to just, yeah, is so the point the calendar app or is the point development? I think it's, it's more to like write something, but at the same time, kind of show uh, how it might be done in a professional environment. Yeah. Although we're just two developers, right? It's not like we have a BA in testers and project management either. Right. Uh, so why don't we do this? Because uh, I know at work we we write tons of specs over everything. So how about for like complex logic, mm -hmm. we write specs for that. Okay. Yeah. But for sense. simple stuff, we skip. Okay. Easy, easy peasy. All right. All right. Okay. So um, we're gonna make an, a user schema. Um, so let's we'll make a new schema. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, sorry. Do you also want to install the types for Mongoose? Sure. Yeah, that's something that I keep forgetting to do. do but it's something that's this? very, very nice. All right. Well, wow, I'm having trouble typing today. Yeah, I'm still getting used to my new keyboard too. Like I'm always fat fingering fingering stuff. What'd you get? Uh it's a red dragon mechanical keyboard. I didn't realize it was mechanical until after I got it. Do you <laughs> like I, it? I typed Ah, uh, I'm getting used to it. I didn't like it at first because it was too clicky clacky. Yeah. Too loud. It'll grow on you though, I think. Yeah, it, it kind of does, but like in the morning, like I wake up early, and so I'm like typing as soft as I can. <laughs> so I don't wake everyone up. I'm in the basement, so, so I, I don't have that worry. Yeah. And I guess also my I'm wife gets up earlier than me, so double don't have to worry. <laughs> there you go. Also, she's a super heavy sleeper, so triple don't worry. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, does Marcus... I would have to import it. There we go. Um, okay. So this takes an object with all the fields. So we're just going to give it a name. 
I think it has to be a string. Okay. Do we want to throw the timestamps on it, or we don't care yeah, about sure. that? Um, I forget. How to do I don't it. remember how to do it though. It's like use timestamps or something like that. Okay. I thought you defined the created at and the updated, or something mm, like that. I don't think so. Okay. Let's Google real quick. If set timestamps, I'm not seeing it. Here we go. Timestamps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That doesn't look right. Timestamps. Yeah. No, that looks right. So you have like, uh, yeah, right there. So oh, you have timestamps. So normally oh, it's an it makes, yeah. Normally it does created at, but this guy uh, wants created underscore at. Oh, okay. That's fine. So then we don't need to do anything. It just creates it automatically. Does it? I guess we'll find out, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we have a schema. Um, and we want to probably make like a interface. Okay. What is the interface for again? Um, so if we want to access like a user object anywhere in our app, then that'll be this. Thing. Oh, right. Right, because we're not going to pass the user's keyboard. Around. That doesn't make any right. sense. Uh, do we also define the ID on the user? Because, I mean, we get the ID for, for Mongo. Uh, we do. Typically, uh, we make it optional so that when you do a create and you pass in a user object, it doesn't have to already have an ID on it. OK. So we could do that. Uh, ID, sad. yep. OK, and then we need like a document. <laughs> Um, is the sorry is the interface is it do you separate it by commas or do you use the semicolons? oh you do right you do yeah. no is that right I think it's just like this yeah it's not complaining but okay well I'm not sure we'll go with now, now yeah. you're making me second guess myself <laughs> that's fine let's keep going okay this user document. Um, I forget how do you declare a document. So this is going to yes. be the same thing as the interface, but this is what is directly returned by Mongoose when you query, I believe. Oops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> like, I don't know how to do now anything we know anymore. Your <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I already have? I don't. Okay. So let's see. Monku's model is that? No, that's not the document. Actually, how how does that work? So uh, you define the schema, and then you there's like that mongoose dot model. Mm -hmm. Is is that what the user is supposed to be? I don't think so. Okay. So, so that's this, this is what we put in our factory. Right, but like that's essentially the the object. It's right? not. I think model is a confusing term. It's not actually the object itself. This is um, this has the functions on it, like right here. So person okay. is a model, but it has all the updates and finds and saves and all that stuff on okay. it. So that's the essentially the bridge to Mongo. Yeah. The the mongoose, uh, the wrapper, the mongoose wrapper. Yeah. Um, but I forget how you declare the document. And it's funny because I like I did a tutorial on this, mm -hmm. and I've completely forgotten it. <laughs> so yeah, when you don't I've always... do things from scratch all the time, yeah, it's, it's really hard to remember. It is, and I I I would I've always found mongoose to be a little uh, confusing. Yeah. 
But I mean, once you have it working, it's it's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, 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 um. Well, let's uh, skip that for now, and we'll see. But when don't we kind of need it though? Well, we can start doing our model, and just see where we need the document. Okay. So it looks like... So I'm going to make a new file for the user model, and this will handle all the... Okay. Like, this is where we'll put all like the finders and setters and mm -hmm. updaters and whatever. Okay. Okay. Um... So we got to import the schema. Yeah. Um, so that would be mongoose model. Then the first param is the collection name, I think. Users. Is it pluralized? I think it is. It, it automatically pluralizes, I think. So if you do user, then I think it looks it up. Oh, really? On the users collection, I think. OK. Uh, that's got to be lower mongoose. So you got to do import star as mongoose. All right. I've never, that's another thing I've never understood about uh, these import. Like, what's the difference between import star as mongoose and like the import user it, schema? It all depends on how um, the library is declared. So if you, um, I think this is is like the default export. If you don't have an explicit export my class in your mm -hmm. file, then there's nothing to import like that. So you ins import the entire file essentially and you call it the mongoose class. So then if you do like mongoose.model, what is it referencing it? Like is that just like model is then referencing model declared in that that file? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Uh, so does what? that? Oh, she. Oh, I, okay. Well, hmm. oh, okay. you have type. Oh, really? Ah, this is where we use the document. Okay, so then this would be a user document. Right. So, so the user document. Uh, free ball in here. Nope. Let's see, how do we do this? How do they do this? See, the problem with these tutorials is they don't type anything. Right. Yeah, that's funny because I'm actually looking at the tutorial that I wrote and I don't do the, the documents, but I also don't type the, the model. So my bad. OK, so this is their interface. Interface, use the schema. Oh, it's the. Here we go. Wait, Here's the mo so. It's the interface the model. It's an I user model. Oh, which is the interface, right? And the interface has to extend. The I see. Okay, so. Back. Wait, I user from interfaces. Okay, so here's the interface. This is their document, so that just has to extend document. So in here. Um, you misspelled so, document, by the way. I did it. Oh, jeez. So I'm not going to call it a mongoose document. What is this? Oh, it's just an interface. I see. Yeah.
document. Is this the mongoose document? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Does it know what document is? I mean, you're not importing it. No, that's that's, that's like, the that that's the web page. Yeah. yeah okay. so try to run mongoose dot document. Okay. Nah. Then I just export it. Well, okay. So it's saying that Oopsies. I think we need to we need to omit the, the ID. ID, right? Or we or we just get rid of line five for now, and then we deal with that later. Let's just omit it. Okay. Um, so that's that's on the user that you omit. Oh, it's so it's, it's like oh my god, I keep it extends that. it's extends omit, uh, and then the type uh, that you do the the angle brackets user, and then I think uh, ID like that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what that does is it'll it essentially creates like a new type of user but without the underscore id property right. on it so it's just a new interface that has everything that user has on it except for id and it yep. also extends documents so it has all the mongoose whatever helper functions yeah which okay. includes id okay so, and that's why we had to omit it because it didn't understand which id field it's supposed to use i see okay all right we got a user model so theoretically we can do stuff with it uh, oh, nope, that's not what I want. Uh, so we still need to connect to Mongoose, right? Yes, we do. Good point. So back in server, I think, uh, on app listen, I think that's where we put our initialization stuff, right? I'm not sure. Yep, it is. Okay. So there's like a mongoose.connect, and then it takes a URI, or the, the mongoose URL. Like so. Yep. All right. Exactly. Put this over here. Um, we just we could just do this anywhere, right? I think it should be. Well, yeah, I guess you can. I think usually you want to make sure that you're actually listening. Before, oh, before you we... try to connect? Really? Yeah, I think so. Because I mean, otherwise you're trying to do two things at the same time and either of them can fail. And that it just kind of makes cleanup a bit more messy. Okay. Huh. So you're saying we do it inside of here? So do we... Yeah. Do we need, like, instead of just having this anonymous function or whatever, should we just have some sort of after we've finished setting up the listen, then do everything? Kind of deal. Like uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Um. All right. So, like, call it server started or something. Yeah. Or er, wait, this is awkward. Uh. All right, and then. <laughs> Oh, uh, we got to import ah. star as mongoose. Yep. All right. So then that's the URI. I'm just going to copy this. Yeah. I don't think I ever set up authentication for my MongoDB. Okay. So then sure. you don't need, you don't need the okay. user pass. Um, the default port, I think is 27017. Yeah. Let's see. I like, just set this up earlier today, but I didn't actually do anything with it. Oh, you didn't download Robo 3T? No. I wanted to try Compass. I've never tried it. So, okay. Yeah, 27017. Okay. Right. And the database, we'll call it Calendar. All right. It's a, a nice name. Yeah. This isn't asynchronous, right. is it? Oh. Uh, it returns a promise. So. Okay. Yep. Create connection. Wait. 
Oh, it's or. Oh, interesting. Okay. Or we talked about. That's weird. I'm um, looking at this. This or oh. this. Or this. Or this. That's weird. So I would just use the the connect like that. Um, oh, this is about indexes. That's weird. So okay, then. So this, this isn't specifically about starting the connection. I think it's just saying. When it starts, it automatically calls create index unless you tell it not to. Okay. Okay. Which, yeah, we should have it. Uh, this is the wrong tutorial. <laughs> do we want to uh, display a message oh on success or error? Oh, I see your lock screen. Do you? That's weird. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's because I hit yeah. uh, Windows L, which on a Mac is to select the URL. Wow, your screen is all fuzzy now. Is it really? Oh, it's, no. Did I yeah, it's history? slowly getting there. It's slowly okay. getting there. My bad. Let me look at the stream real quick. No, the stream's fine. Okay. It's just my it's just my box. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so if we want to display messages, access. Um, you just cut out uh, what you say. Uh, if we want to display messages mm -hmm. on like success or error, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm assuming we do, so we can say, hey, we connected or we failed. Oh, okay. I gotcha. All right. So, uh, so like, don't do it as a as an away. No, no. I think I think that's fine. Uh, the code that I have or that I'm looking at now uh, is after you do the connect, you do mongoose dot connection dot once. Actually, let me. Can I paste it here? I'll paste it in the the chat on Twitch. How about that? Oh my god, that did not come out formatted at all. <laughs> but I think maybe you can get the gist. So uh, there's a mongoose connection once, then the event is open, then it takes a function. Then there's a mongoose connection on, okay. and then that also takes an event and another uh, function. For some reason, I can't open the chat in Twitch. Oh, really? Uh Maybe I can paste to uh, here. Does that help? Here, uh, here is uh, Discord. Let's see. Although I wonder if we await for the connect. If it's gonna, if those events are gonna be triggered, because I mean you're you're basically defining those events after you've already connected. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was having trouble like seeing your message in Discord because it like there's no obvious way to get out of the video mode or whatever. I have to like oh. start typing a message. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Okay. I see. Okay. So mongoose connection dot once. And then this is the event open. Yes, the name of the event. So open. So if it's successfully opened the database, this is what we're going to run. Okay. So for now, yeah, just log something. All right, on error. Okay. And then, yeah. And I think the function does get an error, which would be useful okay. if we do get an error. All right, just dump out the whole thing. We'll see what we get. Yep. Uh, so 13, you want to throw right. server started? Uh, yeah, that's... Oh. Whoop. And it's still not going to work because of async. Oh. Yeah, well, hang on. Can you just do like async function server started equals instead of doing it this way? Oh, yeah, that works too. Okay. That it doesn't actually call it though, right? That's weird. Yeah, it does. It wouldn't have to oh, wait. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah. 
All right. Is it wait? Shh. Yeah, I think that that's all right. All right. Should we see uh, see if this works? Okay. Your uh, indents are totally off to you, by the way. Like okay. line nineteen. Yeah. Oh no. So uh, triggering me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I gotta put you back in video mode. All right. I hide the chat. All right. What is up with that? How are we, how oh, we looking no. there? Stream? Oh, wait, no. This wasn't full screen before. Yeah. How are we looking there? Close. Uh, I'm a little Close. offset. Close. Yeah. It's somehow right. not helping. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, that's right. I forgot it's delayed. There's oh. It's like a delay. <laughs> Boom. All, All right. right. Got it. Nailed it. Great. Okay. Um, uh, so we don't have like a watch, right? So this is stale. Yeah, I would just add a task to the board because we're getting close to the 8 o'clock. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so those are just deprecation warnings, so we can throw a user all pusher in there. That'd be, that would take care of that, but we don't have to do that yet. Um, all right, I don't see the message, though, that we're connected. Yeah. So does I'm just it mean... See do do we have to set up this stuff before we actually connect? Because if this, yeah, especially since we're awaiting, right? Yep. Yeah, I think we, I think you're right. Do we, do we not right. want to await? Uh, I suppose yeah, it should have better. Um, DB open. There we there go. We go. Cool. That takes a while. Okay, and no error. So theoretically, no. uh, I guess we don't have any way to exercise it yet. Uh, we could, like on line nineteen, couldn't we just? Like just add a user? Uh, yeah. Oh, we need to like create all the. Oh, we could do it here. Whatever. Um, yeah. Create. Dan the man. And then I'm triggering myself with my spacing. All right. So. Uh, do you have to save it too? Or just create, save it automatically? I think it saves it automatically. Okay. I'm not positive. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it did. Oh, uh, we got an okay. async. Okay. Okay, so theoretically, oh, we got to go to the root Connect. URL. Uh, oh, you're right. Moment of truth. What's the hotkey? key? Nope. There we go. What are we? Eighty, eighty. Yep. All right. All right. So theoretically, refresh. Uh, oh, it's right there in the upper right corner, isn't it? Uh, sorry, on the the left panel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's a quick refresh there. Wow. Aha! Calendar. Nice. All right. Users. Users. Wow. Not impressed, Compass. Nope. <laughs> but there it is, Dan. Right. He exists. That's awesome. We did it. But there's no timestamps. I thought that there would be timestamps. You're like, right. Created. I think you have to set it. Yeah. And they're probably not important, but I mean, they are nice to have. Yeah, they're nice to have. Yeah. But uh, maybe that'll be a task for another day. So let me add a yeah. card. That's not... Let me find which of my 800 windows has Trello on it. I might have closed it. Nope, nope it there it is. Okay, so... Um... Cool. Okay. This is a server task. Yep. Um, super basic right. authentication. Not quite done yet, but we have at least nope. uh, creating a user. Yep. So eventually, what we're going to want to do is um, have a an API URL where, like, specifically for creating users, and then our client is going to call that. Yep. So for now, I'll just comment that out. Um, we have a repo, so I guess I'm going to just commit all this stuff. Yeah, I think that'd be um, should good. Should I just go ahead and make a branch? Uh, 
Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, okay, yeah, maybe we should do. We could do branches for this the cards. How about that? Okay. Because I mean, that's kind of what we do at work. We sure. do a branch per feature. Then once we're done with it, we we hand it off to QA, of course. But we don't have QA here. Right. So okay, uh, technically this isn't done. So normally what we do is if I have the super basic authentication card, I make a branch for it, do all my work, commit mm -hmm. it. And then when I'm when I'm done with it, then I push the branch out to our repo, and then I make a pull request in like Bitbucket or something, and then everybody can look at it and improve it or approve it. And then once we have a certain number of approvals, then I can go ahead and merge it into master. Um, yep. So I'm technically not done with this card now, but I'm just going to go ahead and make my branch and just push it out to the repo, and then you know we can continue with it later. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to call it. Uh... Is there like a, a, a card number or something? No. Okay. All right. Oops. It's a nifty uh, email there. Oh, Wayne at desktop. That's weird. K three T six dot none. All right. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, I'll put this over here. Wait, what are you typing? We can't see. Yeah, I know. It's a secret. Okay. All right. So cool. it's out there? Yep. <clears throat> awesome. All right. So next time, um, either you can stream and and then I'll, uh, I'll be the pair or uh, I can continue streaming. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. All right. That works. Thank you for joining us, nobody at all. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, well, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. We have three watchers. We do. I think one of them is me. One's me. Now we have four. I still see three. I think, I, I think we have like two watchers here. Wow. All right. Well, it's like a, that's like a record. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll be doing this again next Monday at, at the latest. We might do another one. At an, at an early time, we'll see. And yeah. uh, we have a YouTube channel that currently has zero videos, but uh, somebody will upload these videos that we've yep. created. We'll, and, uh, we'll get there. Yep, we'll get there. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Awesome. Over. Thanks. Bye-bye.